A star is born, Elon. You know, he sent the rocket up two weeks ago, and I saw that rocket, and I saw it coming down. I saw it, it was, when it left, it was beautiful, shiny white. When it came down, it didn't look so pretty. It was going 10,000 miles an hour, and it was burning like hell. And I'm saying, only Elon could do this. It must be an Elon. These are the praises from the recently elected President Donald Trump for Elon and SpaceX in a speech right after he achieved a magnificent victory. From this event, we can also foresee a tremendously prosperous future for space programs, not just SpaceX, but for the whole U.S. in the near future. So what did Elon Musk and President-elect Donald Trump just declare about SpaceX's Starship? Let's get into it in today's episode of Alpha Tech. As soon as it became apparent that Trump was going back to the White House, Elon enthusiastically posted on X, the future is going to be fantastic, accompanied by an inspiring image of a Starship launch. We can truly see the intense passion Elon has for SpaceX and Starship, and it's evident that this is a big force driving him to succeed. As we know, while SpaceX has always been in development, the progress has appeared limited due to the numerous cumbersome and unconvincing regs imposed by the government. If the new president were to loosen the FAA regs on SpaceX's rocket launches, more opportunities would open up for Starship. Clearly, Starship could accelerate its completion timeline, enabling it to quickly undertake its first crucial missions, including getting to the moon. Naturally, this would be followed by further journeys to Mars. Elon has stated that his dream of colonizing Mars could only become a reality under a Trump presidency. While the implications of Elon's relationship with Trump and NASA and other government space programs are still unclear, Mars is now part of the conversation in a way it wasn't a couple months ago. During his first term, Trump was highly enthusiastic about space exploration, even pressuring NASA to attempt a manned mission to Mars before the end of his presidency. However, since Biden took office, space exploration largely got sidelined, with the Artemis moon program getting delayed and several important science missions at the risk of losing funding. Now, with Trump heading back to the White House, his administration could propel America into a new era of space travel. And once again, Mars is within his sights. While campaigning, he hinted that if he got elected, a manned mission to Mars would be launched before the end of 2028, something Elon's had long sought to achieve. In a speech in October, he even pledged, we will land an American astronaut on Mars. SpaceX's position as a contractor may be further bolstered under a Trump ad man, and if NASA makes any shifts to accelerate human missions to Mars, there's a good chance that more contracts could be headed SpaceX's way. However, some argue that regardless of who won the election, SpaceX is going to be the prime choice for major government space contracts, including with the DoD and NASA. Currently, SpaceX is the only option for transporting NASA astronauts from the ISS due to issues with Boeing's Starliner. According to government data, SpaceX has got $3.6 billion in contracts with federal agencies this year, and that figure has increased annually under the Biden admin, despite the rocky relationship between the two. Harris also praised SpaceX, calling it a company whose innovation and agility has revolutionized the commercial space industry at a White House ceremony last year. This demonstrates that SpaceX has earned recognition from many, even those who aren't aligned with Musk, who acknowledge the rare capabilities of a private enterprise that's able to support so many national space programs. Although Elon's known for his bold and surprising statements and predictions, reality has shown that a lot of them come true, albeit a bit slower than we wanted. So, under Trump and his promises, how will Elon plan to make it to Mars? Recently, Musk revealed his intention to send not one, but five unmanned spacecrafts to Mars, utilizing a launch window that opens up in the year after next. However, SpaceX misses that the next one will be in late 2028 to early 29. If these unmanned spacecraft make it safely to Mars, Elon aims to launch a manned mission during the 2829 launch window. Should the initial trials fail, the company will retry unmanned missions during the 2028 window, pushing back crewed missions into the next launch period. To hit these goals, Musk's ultimate ambition is to launch his Starship Super Heavy rocket hourly. And that's why it's so important that the lower half was able to maneuver back beside its launch tower. That way, it can quickly get placed on the launch pad so that the condition of the engines can be checked, the damaged ones get replaced, and then a second stage is attached. It's then refueled and launched again. Could such a pace be maintained? Not right now, as the bottom part of the rocket, known as the Super Heavy Booster, is still undergoing tests. But two years down the road, that does seem possible. In Boca Chica, Texas, there's already two launch towers, although the second one has yet been inaugurated. 
A third is being created at Ramp 39A at Kennedy, and when all three are operational, SpaceX could theoretically launch three Super Heavy boosters almost at the same time. Super Heavy is recoverable, and each mission lasts less than a quarter hour, which is the time it takes to get to an altitude of 70 kilometers, slow down, and then return to base. So it'd be enough for SpaceX to have a fleet of three launches, one per pet, maybe two or three more as a precaution. After all, they're relatively inexpensive. The most expensive thing is the propulsion plant with its 33 Raptor engines. Today, SpaceX is making engines at a rate of one a day. With the upcoming introduction of a new model, which makes extensive use of 3D printing, that figure could be doubled. Why the launch friendly? Because the second stage, which includes Starship, only has enough fuel to make it into Earth's orbit. Future missions to the Moon or Mars are going to require fueling with methane or oxygen mid-flight, and that's another critical operation that has yet to be tested. SpaceX engineers plan to use a fleet of tanker spacecraft that will automatically dock with the main spacecraft to refill its tanks as quick as possible to avoid evaporative losses. Each interplanetary trip will require between 6 and 12 freighters that may or may not be recoverable. Elon estimates that the cost for each refueling launch will be minimal. More importantly, it's designed to be fully reusable, burning approximately 80% of liquid oxygen and 20% of liquid methane, very low cost per pound. This enables cost per ton to orbital space to be about 10,000% lower than Saturn V, he said. The first stage, which is the most expensive, is reusable. The second stage is merely a shell made of the Boca Chica Industrial Complex or just next to the ramp. Costs are kept low and construction is quick because it's made of stainless steel instead of exotic materials like aluminum alloys and carbon fiber. Although many details are under wraps, it appears that SpaceX makes these shells almost in a sequence, directly from metal coils as they arrive from the rolling mill. The bottleneck may lie in the supply of thousands of liters of methane and oxygen needed to maintain an hourly launch cadence. Right now, the fuel farm next to the launch tower only has enough to fuel one rocket, but not multiple in succession. Both Boca Chica and Kennedy are on the coast, so some have proposed building a dock in a small gas pipeline so fuel can arrive by large methane tanker ships. In principle, orbital fuel tankers can also be reusable, which would mean equipping them with heat protection for re-entry. Each tanker only carries six engines, which may be worth reusing, though they're not overly expensive. If time's a critical factor, however, Elon might choose to have them discarded after delivery. This above is SpaceX's ambitious Starship program, but Trump becoming president of the United States will also benefit NASA's crucial moon mission. President Trump, in his first term, brought to life what we now know as Artemis. The formalization of the different programs and plans NASA's created over the years gave it the best structure for returning humans to the moon yet. However, the program's been rife with delays and cancellations due to underfunding. NASA has historically had higher budgets with Republican admins, but with ballooning costs everywhere like Ukraine, Israel, and a potential conflict in Taiwan, then inflation, immigration, and whatever else comes next tighter budgets might be sticking around. That being said, it would be safe to expect a strong push from the administration to get Artemis back on track, cut costs, and meet the deadlines. While it's not the greatest reason to make humans return to the moon, getting Artemis astronauts to the moon before China does is going to be a strong component of the reasoning. And that's it for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching, and see you next time.